No, non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. Purple Daily, presented by Surly Brewing Company. ISO weak side lead. Okay, here you go. You got Ezra Cleveland. You've got Rashad Hill right here on a fan. And here comes C.J. Ham trying to get a piece of Bobby Wagner. All right, their best defensive player. And here comes Madison. Now, look, he's contacted right here. Just like Dalvin would do, you got to win your contact battles if you're a Minnesota Viking running back. That's an extra three yards right there. It's like a car crash, but that's what running backs do. <laughs> oh, so there's so much going on right now. First of all, we've got Brian Baldinger with an amazing football football breakdown. We've got ju- we're in three different locations today for Purple Daily presented by Surly. I'm uh, I'm traveling for uh, some Hubbard Radio meetings. Judd's at home where he usually has a safe quiet space his neighbors are like tearing down their house outside his window it's unbelievable and now they're back <laughs> at it like they stopped while we were between mackie and judd at purple daily and now they're back at it so uh, that's amazing. i will mute when possible i love it no it's great i think it adds a good ambient it's kind of fitting to where the vikings are at right now a lot of noise a lot of a lot of <laughs> adversity to overcome right now they're taking a chainsaw to the roster. It's actually yeah. actually the sound you hear is Miles Garrett taking on uh, Rashad Hill. That's what you hear outside. You got to right break now. this thing up, boys. <laughs> so uh, this is Daily Vikings Entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die here on Purple Daily. And if you're watching us on a TCL TV, we greatly appreciate it because TCL is a huge supporter of us and they provide great TVs for you. Most entertainment, stunning resolution, affordable cost. Enjoy more of the things you love with TCL and every single Wednesday, this is where we admit that we were wrong. When are you going to admit that you were wrong? Every Wednesday on Mackie and Judd and Purple Daily. Let's hit it, Dex. Write that down. Most make predictions and then never admit they're wrong. Yeah, that's not Mackie and Judd. This is the place where we just totally own our horrible predictions. Write this down. And eat them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Write that down. It's Write That Down. Write it down. You like writing things down. With Mackie and Judd. Yep, this is the most transparent segment in all of sports. We make three Vikings or football-related predictions each week. They must be quantifiable. That's really the only set of rules. We keep track of completion percentage and touchdowns on Purple Daily. Write that down. And if you guys want to be guest listener predictors like Derek is about to be, you can send Declan a DM through Twitter or Instagram, or you can send us a message through the feedback tab in the Score North app, which is free to download. It's a central hub for everything we do. We're giving away prizes. We've got, uh, at some point here soon, Winter Classic tickets we're giving away through the app. Oh, yeah. So make sure... You're checking us out. We do? On the score north. Yeah, we got yeah, Winter dude. Classic tickets, baby. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. That's outstanding. I, I, yeah, uh, uh, I hit, we, we asked our promotions department. I said, oh, well, you mean Winter Classic tickets, but I said, good luck getting them. And lo and behold, what do they really? do the very next day? They, they dropped a bomb on me, and they said, oh, we got them. No problem. You said okay. they'd be hard to get. Point promo. That's yeah, awesome. Good promo. for them. Uh, Brooke I'm O'Rourke, wrong. all-star yeah. in the marketing I'm department. wrong again. Yeah. So uh, let's dive into it here. Judd Zolgad, Declan, you guys have been sort of neck and neck for the completion percentage lead. I've been mostly with the touchdown lead all season here. Listeners have been somewhere in between. Let's start with Judd. You said, wow, this is actually amazing. You said Miles Garrett will be held to one sack or less against the Vikings. Will you believe that Miles Garrett... Even though he forklifted Rashad Hill on every other play, was only credited with a half sack in that game against the Vikings. So Miles Garrett would uh, frequently pressure Kirk Cousins in that game, but he was only credited with a half sack. That is remarkable. How did he not have three? Dude, I mean, Kirk did a good job of just, like, getting rid of the ball before getting sacked at times. Um, or moving wow. moving somewhere else to wow. avoid Miles Garrett. But thank you, Kirk. I, I I owe Kirk for getting that point. You do. You should be more nice to Kirk. Yeah, be nicer to Kirk. All right. Prediction number two for Judd. You said there will be some type of feature with Brett Favre's return to Green Bay during the NBC Sunday Night Football pregame show before Tom Brady's return to New England. I watched the whole thing. I did not see any features. I think you're right. With Brett Favre. Yeah, I thought for sure. Seems like a missed opportunity. Yeah. Was it? Did, did it live up to your guys' appointment of must-watch, not-going-to-move oh, yeah. television? Yes. Oh, it was, okay. it was, I thought it was right. so much fun to watch. I, I, Driving rainstorm. It was a good game. Yeah, it was, it was a good game. I love storylines really under- like that. 
It was great. I think it was more just, yeah, it was the storyline. It was the the human elements, the rain, everything. All right, I had a, I had a rough week. Go. Listen, this is what happens when you when you believe in Kirk and you stand behind Kirk and you support Kirk. <laughs> I'm not casting any stones after what happened to me on Write That Down on Mackie and Judd, okay? No, it's true. Well, he lets you down. Yeah, you went like one for 11 on Mackie and Judd, and I have a, a rough one here. I said Kirk Cousins will have 275 or more yards in the air, no interceptions... <laughs> And three, no, they're all wrong. All of these are wrong. <laughs> yeah. And three touchdowns or more against the Browns. So would yeah. would you prefer this or if you would hit on two of the three? Because I think like this is better. <laughs> or they're just all wrong. flame out completely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it was bad. Okay. I think I would just prefer the full flame out, you know? I agree. Because sure. like, yeah. like if you hit on the the yardage and the touchdowns, but not the picks. It'd be like, oh my God, I was so close. So How close. This no, none of it was close. I'm with you. I said the Vikings would beat the Browns and Greg Joseph would have the go ahead field goal with under four minutes left in the fourth quarter or overtime. I said Tom Brady would throw at least three touchdowns against the Pats. I said the Bengals will release Jake Browning by the end of September. He's still on their practice squad. He is? Apparently, yeah. And, uh, and I said the Vikings, in a bonus prediction at some point, would be at least 4-2 and two before the bye, which is now mathematically impossible. Oof. 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 I had a very Kirk Cousins-like game here. What? what? Four. It was oh. bad. Was All right, listeners here, it looks like... Um, hey Sorry, I skipped ahead to Dex there. Um, Nick started off here with what I think is a touchdown pass. So he said Kirk Cousins will throw at least one interception. Yes. Yeah. And have a sub-90 passer rating yep. against the Cleveland Browns. That's the first sub-90 passer rating. because He had a 66 passer rating. The first sub-90 passer rating he's had in like 16 games. And Nick said, put the Kool-Aid down and back away. And we're like, no, yeah. no, man. The Kool-Aid tastes so good. And Nick's like, no. So like, credit to Nick. Full and the credit. INT. The INT helps too. I mean, that's yeah. the second quantifiable thing. Yeah, yeah dude, touchdown. it's touchdown for sure. Uh, Nick also said Cam Dantzler will be inactive on Sunday against the Browns. He was very active. And Steve said the Vikings would trade for well. trade for Stefan Gilmore between now and the NFL trade deadline. Gilmore was released by the Patriots today, yeah. which means somebody will sign him, not trade for him. Sorry. So how about how about this one? The Green Bay Packers. They need help. At the corners, they got problems. This guy needs help. If I'm not mistaken, Jair Alexander might be out for a, a long why would okay, of time. Declan? Why would Stefan Gilmore sign with a one and three team right now? I don't know. They they need cornerback help. I don't think Packers. it's it's completely Packers. out of the question. Packers make he Packers probably wants make money. Sense. They might just just throw him a bunch of money. I don't think it's that the outlandish Vikings? to suggest it. There's the zero enough, zero uh, chance. Yeah, they don't even they, they have no they have no money. You yeah. know, the they, score they, social mentions are at write that down right now. I got it. Did you already throw it out there? Oh, yeah. Of course I threw it out <laughs> Clickbait. There. Typical clickbait from, from both of you guys. You guys Obviously are clickbait. <laughs> clickbait. Although what's funny is like when, because it, it is fun to throw that stuff out because it's, it's, you know, it's a conversation dis, uh, discussion. But then when like when, it, when you throw that out there, people just think that it's all three of us are like clicking. We're like, we're like all clickbaiting at the same time. There's, by the way, there's nothing to click on. It's just yeah, a graphic, right? Yeah, it's just a graphic. So, and it's yeah. sweet, sweet engagement. Yeah. You're just trying to get <laughs> people to listen to your show because it's <laughs> yes. not that good. <laughs> well, well, yeah, we agree Marconi, with probably, probably both. Tony doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> he's dead, anyways. What's a macaroni? Um, Declan, you said Bashad Breland will post his highest PFF grade of the season against the Browns. Uh, he did. Yes! Oh wow. 64 was his PFF grade, which That's is slightly awesome. higher than the 62 he had. One series. <laughs> hey, genius. Didn't, he didn't put so a limit they, on this. They don't have like a, a non-grading. Like if you, you have to qualify. Six, no, if yeah. you play a no. snap, no you get a grade. Oh, if, you know, if, you, if you play a snap, okay. you get a grade. Good job. Yeah. That's a good job, man. Yeah, you, you did say up? Alex Madison will have at least 50 all-purpose yards against the Browns. He had 20. Whoops. He and played. then Baker Mayfield will have at least two turnovers, and the Vikings will beat the Browns. Baker was terrible, but came up short on that one. So Declan still clinging to the completion percentage lead, 37% completions, four touchdowns. Judd, 36% completions, one touchdown. Listeners have tied for the touchdown lead with me at five. They're at 32% completions. I am at 29% completions on the season. So, all right. 
um, because we had some scheduling things this week. I'm very high maintenance with my current travel schedule. So uh, Derek is uh, sending his in via satellite to us. Mm -hmm. So how do you guys, should we just stay in rotation like we normally do? We'll start with Derek via satellite Mm -hmm. and then Judd, Declan, and then back to me. Let's get it. All right. Here's Derek's first prediction. Hey, y'all. Uh, sorry, I can't be with y'all uh, recording this episode live, but, you know, uh, work comes first. That being said, I have some uh, predictions for y'all. So uh, write that down. Uh, the Minnesota Vikings will be second in the NFC North going into the bye. I say that because the Bears, they have two tough games they're two and two now they've got the raiders in vegas and then the packers in soldier field i believe and i believe they've dropped both of them to be two and four and the vikings at three and three will uh be second in the division all right there's Derek's first prediction i got a feeling that only one team from this division is making the playoffs just a hunch Mm -hmm. you think Mm mm-hmm you think yeah, with the West nice. being fantastic, the South yeah. being competitive, and the North absolutely sucking wind? Yeah. Ugh. All right, Judd, your first prediction. Uh, the Vikings, because it's it's Detroit. Um, Zimmer coach teams have won seven consecutive games since I think they lost three in a row to Detroit. So they are on a seven-game winning streak against the Lions, looking to make it eight. And the Vikings will beat the Lions by 10 or more points on Sunday. Ooh, okay. And we're going to act like everything's fine, calm down, and – it means it really is going to mean if you beat Detroit, very little. And if you don't, if you don't beat them, you got problems. You got big problems. But I'm going big with props. ten or more points, Declan. Okay. By the way, Sounds the good. spread on this game right now seven something, right? Yeah, it's uh, it's actually up to eight and a half on ESPN. This this is from Caesar Sportsbook. Oh, it's at up to eight and a half on the Vikings. Oof, that's dude, that lot. is and in seventy four percent of that's cocky. No, I don't, actually, I don't have that figure. But it looks like, uh, according to ESPN's Football Power Index, Vikings have a 74% chance to win this game. I just you know, This is just a game, just get out alive. Get out without a season-ending injury and get out with a three-point win if you can. But you're saying 10 or more. All right. Yeah, I think Detroit's okay. awful. I think they're okay. awful. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. a terrible franchise. Mm-hmm. Don't be haughty. All right, mm-hmm. Declan? All Write right. this down. Similar to Judd's, but I will say the Vikings will beat the Lions, but by seven points or less. <laughs> or okay. less. Or, or less. less. Okay. okay. The Vikings will beat the Lions by seven points or less. I think it's going to be close because we are all just assuming that the Lions are crap, and while the Vikings are also not exactly a great team either. So right. the Vikings yeah. will beat the Lions by seven points or less. The Vikings are better than their record, I think. I agree with Zim slightly, but at some point, like you got to win games. So... Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm, this just feels like a classic sort of muddy trap type game. But all right, write this down. I'm going to beat you guys to this one. Christian Derrissaw will start against the Lions. Christian Derrissaw will start against okay. the Lions. I need some okay. completions. And Maybe. I feel like I don't think this is a touchdown. Like Rashad Hill was awful and Derrissaw has been a full participant. Like it makes sense. We'll see. Do you guys think he'll start? I think so. I do think he'll start, yes. If he doesn't start now, I guess my question is, when does he? Coming out out of the bye? The thing is, you'll never have a better opponent to start against. Yeah. I mean, I guess against against Dallas, you know, three more weeks, you get a bye and then get Dallas. But just put him out there, man. Rashad Hill's been one of the worst left tackles in the NFL this season. And he's a backup. Yeah, exactly. I'm with you. All right. uh, Back to Derek via satellite, his second prediction. Write this down. And uh, my second prediction. Write that down. Uh, it's guys. I don't know if y'all have uh, checked the month we're in, but it's Kirk Tober, baby. Uh, write that down. Kirk Cousins puts up two middle fingers to Randy from Cottage Grove and forces Randy to put him in his stud stable next Monday. Kirk Cousins throws for 350 yards and three touchdowns next week against the lions i love it well because we weren't able to interact with derek let's let's give him the at least 
on that. Yep. Oh, let's, by, not, let's not hold him so, to the exact. So he sent a, an additional clip after that and realizing his error. And he goes, oh, by the way, clarify that I I do say at least. So, yes, okay. that is <laughs> that is um, <laughs> that is a parlay and a, and a touchdown parlay. I mean, he's saying that Randy will include him in the stud stable on Mackie and Judd. And, I mean, yeah. 350 and three touchdowns is already a pretty big performance. So that's a, that's a touchdown. Dude, man. I love it. I love it. All right. Back to Judd Zolgad, your second prediction. Stefan Gilmore, as we talked about, just released by the New England Patriots, will sign with the Green Bay Packers. Stefan okay. Gilmore will sign with the Packers to solidify a defensive backfield that has injuries galore right now. Isn't that the type of thing that Aaron Rodgers has been sort of begging for since, yeah. you know, like the last five or ten years? When a guy like that's available and you have a chance to win a Super Bowl, go get him. Right. And he's right about that. Yeah. Like, I totally get that one. So it makes yeah. perfect sense. Declan? All right, my second prediction. Write it down. You like writing things down. All right, guys, Mike, we're gonna possibly we're gonna steal this after our first trip around the room because I already had this written down. But there will be no wild card teams out of the NFC North and NFC East divisions this year. Yeah. So no wild card teams will come out of either of those divisions. I'm gonna put the East and the North looped in. Yeah, those it, th- those are t- pretty pretty garbage divisions they're, I mean, they're bad sorry. they're bad and i don't even think that's a touchdown i mean those divisions stink like those are just those are just it really just feels bad like divisions. dallas and green bay just feel head and shoulders above all of the other yeah. six teams in those two divisions right now unless the vikings turn things around uh before i make my second prediction a shout out to one of our partners here moon motorsports celebrating 50 years as a family owned and operated multi-line power sports dealer and uh, one of the cool things they do, in addition to just being the absolute largest uh, inventory of, of power sports vehicles, um, they also will allow you to store your motorcycle for the winter months. They've got a safe and secure storage facility. So if you're just kind of wondering, ah, my garage is packed, you know, where do I put the bike? Hit them up at Moon Motorsports. Stop in on the uh, corner of, uh, it's just like the exit off 94 to Monticello. You can see them or stop by their website, moonmotorsports.com. Write this down, my second prediction. I think we're going to get a classic Kirk Cousins bounce back game. (laughs) And I don't don't know. We'll see. The game might still be close. The defense might still have problems. But I do know that, write this down, Kirk Cousins will have a passer rating over 100 against the Lions in this game. Back on track. This is the Giants game from a couple years ago at home. Like 100%. This is a classic Kirk Cousins bounce back game. It's a noon game against the Lions at home. Yep. Let's yep. let's feast. The Lions are going or the Vikings are going to show us, right? We didn't believe after the Browns game. Well, look at what we did to the Detroit Lions. I think you're exactly right. Yep. Get those feel good vibes going. Uh, and then are we back to Derek's third prediction here? Yep, third and final his prediction? third prediction. A uh, little bit of uh, trouble with the satellite on that third prediction, so I can't play it, but I will read it for you guys. Uh, Derek says the Vikings will hold the Lions to one, to under 100 yards rushing wow. on Sunday, which is something they haven't done all season. So the Vikings will hold the Lions to under 100 yards rushing on Sunday. Write this down. There it is. All right. Uh, Judd Zolgad, your final prediction. Final prediction for the uh, Write That Down Purple Daily Edition. After watching the Cleveland Browns, after scouting them closely in stadium on Sunday, Mm. Baker Mayfield will not receive an extension from the Browns. Wow. He will not get a contract extension from the Cleveland Browns. Dude. I mean that's that would be big, right? It would be one oh, of the first. It, it would be one of the first teams to draft a quarterback in the first round, and then say, you know what, we're not going to fall into this trap of giving non-elite quarterbacks elite yes. quarterback money, right? And and you hired Stefanski partially to help you with that, right? And what so, to, help, to help you with what? W- with quarterback play and identifying quarterbacks, and okay. also to say to say, Kevin, can we get the most from th- this guy? And what does it do to our roster if we pay Baker Mayfield cousins like dollars? And he should say, yeah, it's not a good idea. Yeah, yeah, it's. Okay. Uh, I I think I think it would be a, a franchise crippling move. And there's a lot of parallels here to paying a guy like Baker Mayfield, you know, top five money to the cap, which is what he would probably have to get. Because he would be the next quarterback available to hit the open market. So, uh, All right, uh, Declan, your final prediction. Yeah, my final one. I've uh, done this on Mackie and Judd Edition. I'll change it to the Purple Daily List Edition. A little primetime parlay, three item. The Rams beat the Seahawks. The Chiefs beat the Bills. And the Ravens beat the Colts. 
So I'm going to go a little primetime parlay. Rams beat the Seahawks on Thursday night football. Chiefs beat the Bills on Sunday night football. Ravens beat the Colts on Monday night football. Great games okay. of uh, primetime. Great right. primetime games this week. All right. I like it. Uh, write this down. I'm going to give you a little, little positivity here, all right, against the Lions. Daniil Hunter will tally at least nine pressures in that game. So is so Miles Garrett had 10 and that was just one of the most dominant performances you'll see and somehow only had a half sack. The Lions pass blocking unit is also garbage and Daniil Hunter will feast. He will have <laughs> I don't know how many sacks, but he'll have at least 9 pressures as classified by Pro Football Focus in that game against the Lions. Write it down. So, there I think that's a touchdown cuz like it's a yeah, that's, that's a ridiculous nine pressures is a ton. Yeah. But this is why the Vikings I think should win big like i i think you're right i think kirk is going to have a kirk game the defense is going to look good the lions stink man campbell is man campbell yeah i i think they're going to feast man as a whole and then man campbell's gonna say we're gonna bite their kneecaps off off the old kneecap I would be. I would definitely wear my knee pads in that game against the Browns this weekend, just to be safe. So uh, there you have it. That's write that down and the accountability session here on Purple Daily. Uh, Judd, if the Vikings win that game, how will you celebrate? What will you drink? Uh, win or lose, Phil. Let me make this very clear. There's only one choice when it comes to beers, and that's the IPA that revolutionized beer in our fine state. That is mm. Surly Furious. That is what I w- will drink. That is what I think the fans should drink in sharing I- either the celebration of a Vikings victory or the just sort of lull of a defeat. Surly Furious. That's what we're all going to drink. And then you know what? As you're drinking it, I want you to send me your pictures on Twitter at Jay Zolgad. I want you to send me your pictures. You know, your your furious can. I'll demonstrate here for those watching right in front of your TV. Yeah, show them how to take a picture. Right yeah. these in the background. I'm demonstrating with my surly furious can, which always sits here like a friend, like a good friend who never <laughs> abandons me. It's not like Stella who, you know, the dog comes and goes. I don't know oh, where yeah. she is. Mm. My surly furious can always here. A good friend you can rely on surly. Yeah. So, uh, all right, every Wednesday, we also make a trip or two around the room here. It's been a, kind of a, just a buzzkill season so far, but we try to, you know, we complain on Monday and Tuesday, and then, we, and then we bring the positive vibes on Wednesday as we reset for the next game. So we'll start with Judd. This is Purple Positivity Wednesday here on the show. I know this is going to be difficult, just the, the fashion in which they have started one and three in that game against the Browns. There's a lot more things to complain I think a lot, I, my sense is a lot of people and fans are just done with Mike Zimmer. Yeah. So um, that's the yes. that's kind of the, the tone going into this Lions game is yes. there's a lot of people, I think, even just straight up rooting for losses, which, you know, if that's, if that's I, how you how are as a fan. How can people do that? How can people do that? I never root for losses. I think sometimes, though, like if you're, if, if you feel like, listen, like we're just stuck in the mud and the only way to get unstuck and ultimately achieve the goal of winning a Super Bowl or whatever right. team you're cheering for in other sports. Sometimes, yeah, you need a little short-term step back for a couple steps forward. I'm not quite there with this team yet, but uh, that's I think that's the the vibe surrounding this game right now. So Purple Positivity Wednesday, Judd, what do you got for us? Okay, I'm going to start off with this. I'm going to start off with the expected fingers crossed return, Anthony Barr. Anthony Barr hasn't played since week two of the 2020 season when I believe he tore his triceps, if I'm not mistaken, missed the rest of 2020, uh, dinged up his knee clearly pretty badly in training camp, has yet to play. That's a disappointment. But the return of Anthony Barr, and here's where it's a positive, I think it will help. I'm not saying it solves, but I think it will help the run defense, okay? So the return of a Barr in this game, which I think, we're told by Zimmer on Monday should happen is a bit of positivity, no matter how much we now think that Barr was not worth keeping. That's almost a, d- a different discussion. He's here, and if he can play and help the run defense, positive. Don't you think, like, Anthony Barr, if if he's even 90% healthy, he's going to help your run defense. Just his ability to, to chase players down and to yeah. move from – you know, one side of the field to the other. All due respect to these guys that have come in, you know, Lynch and Vigil. Vigil like, yeah, 
those are those are just guys. Like Nick Vigil was signed as depth. He wasn't signed as a guy that's going to play 800 snaps. Like and I'm not he, sure good he is against the run. I'm I'm not not sure what his PFF grade is against the run. But yeah, I think you're right. I think Barr's return uh, will help. I don't I don't think it's going to solve your problems. But you asked me to find a positive, and uh, so I looked long and hard, deep within my soul, and found one. Yeah, and and to this point, we brought these numbers up earlier in the week on the show, and on Mackie and Joe. But it bears repeating that so far this season, the Vikings' run defense is 28th in yards per rush allowed, 4.8 yards per rush allowed, 30 missed tackles, which is the third most in the NFL, or fourth most. Um, And as an overall defense, the Vikings are 28th in yards per play allowed at 6.1 yards per play. And so, I don't know, Anthony Barr coming back can't make it worse. I don't think. I don't think. (laughs) That's the positive. (laughs) You can't make it worse. Um, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you guys what I think should be purple positivity. It's up to the Vikings if they want to deploy this, okay? So through four weeks, Rashad Hill has allowed the third most pressures of any offensive tackle in the NFL. Mm-hmm. He's right there with Alex Leatherwood, who's a rookie, right? Isn't Leatherwood a rookie or is he year two? Was he this year or last year? I can't remember. I remember. And um, a couple of, like actually Alejandro Villanueva wasn't he a free agent? But there's like Storm oh, Norton. Storm Norton has allowed 18. That's yeah. the greatest name ever. Storm right Norton. So there's some guys who are struggling, and Rashad Hill's in that mix with 18 pressures allowed, 10 against the Browns last week. So my purple positivity is his replacement, Christian Derisaw, in his senior year at Virginia Tech, logged almost 300 pass blocking snaps. And allowed just six pressures. None were sacks. I get that that's college, and this is the NFL. This is the this is the big boy league. But I think by just putting Christian Derrissaw in there to do what he was drafted to do is going to be a huge upgrade, even if he's not an All Pro right out of the gate. Um, so my purple positivity is there is help on the way at left tackle. Do they want that help this week? The, the answer should be yes. Yeah. It's the Lions. Just make this happen against the Lions. I ran that by Boone, sort of scoffed at me, because <laughs> I I said the same thing. What did what was his thought on it? Because I missed the show his yesterday. His thought is trying to put a rookie in at, at this point, um, but, it, all, but albeit a first round pick, it's just so much to ask, and it's not going to fix things. That's that's his thought. Well, I mean, it's not going to magically make everything elite, but like I know he, I he was he was thing. drafted to play football. Like yeah. at what at what point? At some point, he's got to be throwing well, the fire, right? And Rashad Hill can't start. That's that's my other point. Like like yeah. Christian Derrissaw, let's find out. We know Rashad Hill can't start there. And and his decline is exactly what happens. You know, you start him for a game, maybe two, you sort of get by, right? Mm-hmm. Now you start him for three and it gets shaky. And then it's the fourth game and it's really <laughs> shaky. It's bad. And this is th- this is what happens to backups who you basically just say, all right, you're the starter. So that's where I'm with you on Derisaw. I'd rather find out than like continue to go back to the Rashad Hill well. I mean, I, and I think I guess if there is another counter argument, like of all the things the Lions do poorly, getting after opposing quarterbacks, they actually do a decent job of. But there's not. I mean, there's not a Miles Garrett. Like this is there's not. And by the way, Carolina so far has done a great job. If you're looking at the next potential spot, you know, at some point you got to pull the trigger on it, especially with how bad Rashad Hill's been. So. I respectfully, very respectfully, disagree with our guy, the Rhino, Alex Spoon. Rhino's right going to rip your head off. He's going to come <laughs> out is. of Seattle or wherever the oh. hell you are. I know. Uh, all right, Dex, purple positivity. What do you got? Yeah, my purple positivity. I'll go with Kirk. Who's not the only Kirk? You're not the only Kirk fan and defender on this show, Mackie. I'll, I'll, I'll defend oh, yeah. Kirk here. Such a Kirk defender. I'll, 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 I'll defend Kirk here a little bit. This from Vikings Communications. You know, we're always we're always looking for stability at the here quarterback position. We're yeah. always looking for here's quarterback our, statistics, right? Here's our daily here's our daily yeah. statistic. Putting Kirk, let me guess is this is that whatever this is, it's going to put Kirk Cousins in the same sentence as Tom Brady and Drew Brees, right? That's my actually guess. no, actually none of those quarterbacks. But the Tom Brady and Drew Brees is of Vikings quarterback history. That is, uh, Kirk Cousins is now just the fourth quarterback to throw for a hundred touchdowns in a Vikings uh, uniform. He joins Fran Tarkington with two thirty nine. Tommy Kramer, 159. My guy, Dante Culpepper, at a buck 35. He is the just fourth quarterback to make this list. It's remarkable. He's already obviously been here, what, this is year four of Kirk? 
and he's already got 100 touchdowns. Good for Kirk Cousins. He joins elite company. Those are three of the best quarterbacks in Vikings history. So good for Kirk. He's had 100 touchdowns already. Yeah. Proud of you, buddy. I will say, you know what? I had a, uh, obviously, I uh, tweet once in a while and sometimes no ruffle the feathers of people on Vikings Twitter with my I know you got negativity. Twitter. But uh, I was swapping DMs yesterday with, it's a, uh, let me, let me just read this real quick because yeah. I don't want, I want to do this justice. Um, there are a couple. There are a couple people on Vikings internet that are very staunch Kirk supporters that have respectful conversations, and I love it. So uh, my guy Deep Tomas sent me some numbers yesterday via DM. I think he tweeted these out too. But essentially, that the Vikings have only won. So in in games where Kirk has a QB rating under ninety two, so when he has a bad game, the Vikings have only won one game. And other quarterbacks like Drew Brees or Russell Wilson, uh, yep. you know, whatever. Aaron Rodgers. That there's that those teams will will bail their quarterback out more often is the statistical thing. So that Kirk isn't getting a ton of support. And I would say that he's getting a lot less support defensively and offensive line last year and this year than before. The real year, and it's tough to go back now, but like 2018 was the real year that they needed to cash in, right? Because that was the year that the whole thing with the defense was still top five. The offensive line wasn't as much of a train wreck. It was still pretty bad. But that was the year to really cash in. And so I, I, I would I would be really curious at some point, whether it's with the Vikings or whether it can happen some other place in the next two or three years before Kirk gets super old, what would he look like? If he had a fully supportive, all-in, offensive-minded, and empowering head coach, like a guy that wasn't just carving out 45 minutes on a Thursday because he has to to yep. sit down with his quarterback, but a guy that was like sending obnoxious text messages at 2 in the morning about offensive scheme and two-minute drill, right? Like that person that you can collaborate with well, and feel like it's a partner because he doesn't have that in Mike Zimmer. And I would be curious at some point in his career to see what he looks like with a guy that's like, no, dude, Here's how we're. Here's how you're going to be a dog in the last three minutes, or here's how you're going to get over Miles Garrett pressuring you, right? Like we're probably not going to see that with the Vikings. This is why Kyle Shanahan wanted him so badly because that that was the guy. Yeah. He and McVeigh were the two guys that would have gotten the most from Kirk and would have um, basically, not to be insulting about it, but tricked up Kirk to make mm -hmm. Kirk in the best position possible to succeed every week, and that's and that's why taking the cash here hurt him. I mean, it's clearly life-changing money, and that's great. But if you think about who could have affected Kirk positively, from yeah. your point, those two guys. Either one of those two guys would have spent their time with Kirk. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, well, it's a, it's an alternate reality for another episode, I guess. Tomorrow is State of the Offense, by the way. So I won't be part of that. I have uh, Hubbard Radio obligations, but you guys will dive into, I'm sure, a little Kirk Cousins talk tomorrow on the show. Uh, a sh no. a shout out offensive to Fed line. We're just gonna break it down. Offensive it. line, the whole Love show. It. Dude, those Boone episodes are so much fun. Like well, the, you know, the, they're great. The He's insight great, yeah. he brings to the offensive line. Because you learn something. Yes. Imagine and, that. Someone who doesn't just sugarcoat the Vikings' woes and tells you what's really wrong. Yeah. Well, and he's been in that locker room. He's been coached yeah. by Mike Zimmer. He knows people in the building. And I think if you haven't checked out the Tuesday episodes, if your recollection of Boone is like, he was a free agent bust with the Vikings, definitely check out his insight. He's also doing the pregame show on Sirius XM on Sundays good. right before the game. So he's um, he's he's getting into this, and we're, we're pumped to have him on our team here at SCORE and Purple Daily. Hey, a shout-out to our friends at Federated. You're looking for frontline protection. Whether you're a quarterback or a business owner, Federated's here to help you with risk management. Fire prevention is the big theme of the month at federatedinsurance.com. So uh, if 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 you if you're thinking to yourself as a business owner, man, maybe my I don't know I don't know if I have a great plan for bad things that could happen to my company uh, or things that could eat away at my bottom line. Well, that's where Federated comes in with a hundred plus years of experience. Federatedinsurance.com and remember at Federated, it's our business to protect yours. All right, any final words of wisdom for you guys on this? Write that down Wednesday. No, I think get I'm these done. Knee caps ready. You know, I, I think I'm done do. now. Wear the knee pads for sure. Yeah. Uncle Buck, he'll, he'll shave no, right off the old kneecap. Do? I don't want anything to do with that. You bite Man Campbell's knees just before he can bite yours. That's how you win against Man Campbell. I'm like a crouton to to Dan Campbell, dude. Oh, like, yeah. I, I got, I, I'm I'm less than a crouton. I don't even know what would be lower than a crouton, he, but I'm. 
You're oh, you're no. probably an appetizer, like a, like a vanilla I, wafer. I think you're an appetizer. I yeah, think man. you're a pre yeah. a pre football yeah. game. Uh-huh. You're a shrimp cocktail for yeah. sure. Yeah, there camp. we go. That's actually, Ooh, a good one. A good, one. A, good <laughs> a good shrimp cocktail is hard to find, and it's delicious. Mm-hmm. Expensive too. <laughs> They do. They charge you like four bucks per shrimp. Yeah. It's ridiculous. I, yeah. I tried to get shrimp yesterday for dinner for this exact reason. I was like, no, I'm not paying $10, $12 for, for five pieces of shrimp. I'm not but doing it, that. But it's a it's jumbo just, shrimp. Yeah, but it it's is. still a shrimp. It's still shrimp, dude. Doesn't make sense. <laughs> anyway. All right. That's Purple Daily. Daily Vikings yeah. Entertainment and Life Advice presented by Surly Brewing Company. We'll see you guys tomorrow.